Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. I'm Michael Landfield and in this video I'm going to be talking about what we can do as vegans and vegan advocates when we are witnessed to some violence, some, uh, some direct abuse in, you know, in front of us or in our circle we see some or we witness some violence. What can we do if it's violence to non-human animals or if it's violence to humans? What can we do? What can we do um, with ourselves to heal this? And what we can do to heal this in the being that is being exploited. And so if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it around with all your friends and family and anyone you think would find it useful. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to click that little bell icon to receive notifications in your email. As well, please don't forget to subscribe to my email newsletter to receive updates, news, and freebies. And if you really want to help support me and, and me continuing this YouTube channel, as well as releasing my publishing, releasing and publishing my books, and to share this vegan message to the world, then please do support me with a one-time or monthly donation and sponsor my work. Click down below in the description, you'll see all the information. Now, this video is so important because, and sorry for the background noise, but there is child in this house and he often is shouting. So sorry for that. Uh, but in any case, what can we do if we are witnessed to abuse or are witness to some form of abuse? May it be with non-human animals or with humans? What can we do directly or indirectly to stop this, these abuses from happening? What can we do to alleviate that suffering? What can we do to have compassion for these individuals. So recently someone told me that um, they witnessed human abuse and I want to and also I've, I've also been witnessed with witness to animal abuse and I just want to share my feelings of what I do in situations or what I would do in situations like these. So let me talk about first non-human animals because I think this is very, very important. So I've been a witness to animal abuse directly and indirectly, meaning I wit was bearing witness to the animals, chickens, pigs, cows, and other animals in slaughter trucks in these tr big transport trucks on the way to slaughter and in these situations there is not much we can do to immediately or directly save these animals we have to realize as vegans and vegan advocates that the only reason these animals are being trucked to the slaughterhouse is because of consumer demand so if consumer demand goes down, the number of animals will also go down. So it's just consumer demand. The more people that go vegan, the more animals or the less animals will be killed and the more animals will be free. Okay? And so we need to realize this. This is the main thing. If we blow up slaughterhouses or if we you know, send fire to these laboratories where animals are used and abused. Um, even if there's no one in these places, okay, all the humans went, went home, there's nobody working there, we rescued all the animals from those horrific places. Even if we blow up 20 of these slaughterhouses, it's not going to make any difference because these petty little uh, you know, destruction that we do to these buildings, it's just going to keep on going on. They're going to build 
these mega corporations are going to build more slaughterhouses or they're just going to ramp up production to the other slaughterhouses and you know I this doesn't work it's consumer demand basically so if we get consumers to either you know to go vegan basically that's that's what we want to do is to get consumers going vegan then um, that's the whole solution basically get more and more people going vegan right now we promote veganism but if they want to do less than veganism that's all we can do we can only share the message but we're not here to share a message of lesser than veganism because what we want is we want people to go vegan now having that taken care of what do we do in situations where animals are being abused where animals are on slaughter trucks where we see the farmers or the slaughter house workers beating the animals or killing the animals what do we do unfortunately again it's due to the fact that it's consumer demand okay so what we need to do is we need to in these situations we can probably take a video or take some photos and upload them to social media and share them around with friends and family and maybe one of some of them will have empathy and have compassion for these animals and you know eat less animal products or even go vegan and so the whole idea is to share as much as we can the suffering well first of all first of all it's the idea is to bear witness to really understand what these animals are going through to have as much compassion as we possibly or sorry much as much empathy as we possibly can with these animals to have our deep revelations and awakenings uh, while bearing witness and connecting to these animals uh, individually and also as as groups that's number one number two is to if we can to take some photos take some videos and share it around with everybody as many people as we can through social media even if we share it to 10 people or 100 people or whatever amount of people one person might be inspired to go vegan or at least to eat less animals and so that is what we need to do because the more and more people share the message get people to see that what's happening with these animals and to talk about how we can instead of you know supporting violence we can support compassion and support love and support respect for all beings so another thing that we need to realize the third thing is that it's consumer demand okay it's consumer demand so we have to when we're bearing witness or when we are uh, you know in these places with other act activists and advocates sharing the message and bearing witness not only can we like take photos and take videos and share them on Facebook or YouTube or elsewhere but to hand out leaflets to people people that are walking passerbys or people in their cars when they're on a you know red light or something like that as much as we can hand out some vegan leaflets and don't sugarcoat anything tell it as it is tell it as it is okay in the most loving compassionate way possible okay so we share it with vegan flyers or vegan leaflets and what we also want to do is I mean to do all of this of course but uh, to do all of it to share the the message through social media and also to ha be handing out vegan leaflets and to bear witness to see these animals face to face eye to eye okay now what do we do when we see somebody like a slaughterhouse worker or or farm worker beating these animals or killing these animals what do we do how do we save these animals people feel in despair or horrified or saddened by what we are seeing so how can we what can we do in these situations and the whole idea is really we can't do anything we can talk to the slaughterhouse workers and say there are other ways to make money we don't have to be killing animals and all of that stuff trying to have empathy for these people because they're just wounded and hurt just like all of us 
are. And we need to have empathy and compassion for them as much as we can. And so these are the things that we can do when we're direct uh, experience, uh, direct witness and, and experience violence. And we witness that, not just seeing it on a video, but actually witnessing it in front of us. But when we are experiencing um, or witnessing violence pertaining to people, so let's say we are in some situation where somebody is hitting or abusing someone else, another human, if it's within our families or if it's a family or, or, or friends, like actually not just slapping, even though slapping is, you know, slapping a child is not a good thing at all, but I mean a physically abusing a child or understanding that that child was physically abused. Maybe uh, your family member doesn't do it you know, d directly in front of you, but you know that that person does physically abuse, for example, their children um, or, or their spouse or someone. Because um, I've seen even on Facebook how some people are, are even saying that, well, they've been in uh, domestic uh, violence, abuse with their spouse, and even, even women towards men. So women are actually abusing men. I mean, it's more, more men abusing women. But I've often even seen uh, stories and even, even friends through Facebook, women abusing men and how eventually the men got out of the abusive relationship. So what can we do in these contexts when we are either being physically abused, if, if it's mentally, verbally, or, or, or physically, or if we are witnessing somebody else abusing somebody or knowing that they are abusing you know, someone, what can we do? Um, again, this is a product. This abuse is the, is the outer effect of what is happening when somebody is eating animal products. Now again, not everyone is going to abuse a companion animal or abuse their spouse or children. But what we need to realize is that when we look at the, popula at the vegan population of the world, hardly, and I understand that the vegan population is very small compared to the rest of the world, but the vegan population, virtually no one, no one that I know of or even that I've heard of abusing someone else. Now, they may abuse somebody uh, mentally through their words or something like this, because I know a lot of, um, or I used to know at least a lot of uh, angry vegans that, uh, that were hateful towards, towards, towards pre-vegans or non-vegans uh, verbally, but I'm talking about actually physically abusing another. So I never heard or I never witnessed or I don't know of any vegan physically abusing another another being okay maybe maybe some insects or maybe uh, mosquitoes or something like that but not deliberately abusing another being okay no matter what not a, not physically abusing another being but we can definitely say people that are eating animal foods a lot of them are abusing either their companion animals or some farm animals or their, any one of their family members, maybe their spouse or children or whoever. And so we realize that the reason, most likely the reason that these people are abusing anim uh, animals or humans is that they're consuming the food. Because don't forget, we consume that food, we're consuming fear, violence, terror, suffering, depression, sickness, disease, and we are getting a lot of that. We're getting a lot of sickness. We're getting, we're getting the same things back, basically. And uh, it's no surprise when we're eating animals, just like I did in the past, I abused my companion animals because the violence was going in me and I had all the outrage, their anger, the judgment, the steal, the theft, the stealing. I had the 
the physical anger within me because I was eating terror and the fear and the physical violence. I was eating it because those vibrations, because when people are abusing animals, the farm, the farm workers and the slaughterhouse workers, and by no means, um, I mean all farming, all slaughterhouses have abuse no matter what. I mean, even in your backyard farming, you'll see that humans are abusing these animals because they are trying to dominate these beings that don't want to die. And so they're, these animals are trying to struggle to get away from the human because they don't want to die. So, unfortunately, almost all farmers and slaughterhouse workers, to some degree, use physical... Uh, physical torture and punishment on these animals. And so what we need to realize is that when we're witnessed to some form of violence, when it comes to human violence, we ultimately need to have empathy and compassion for these humans that are causing this violence because they are consuming the violence. So it's a product of what they're, what they're eating. So what they're doing basically is they're eating the foods that are extremely, extremely violent. And they're becoming violent. So what can we do in these situations? When we see somebody beating somebody directly in front of us, or when they're beating us, or when we know that these people are beating someone behind closed doors, what can we do in that immediate moment? Well, that's a very difficult question. And again, this has to do with consumer demand. Okay? What they're doing is they're beating these animals because of consumer demand. Okay, so the more, again, the more people we get going vegan, or at least the more uh, leaflets, vegan flyers, and the more we talk about it on, on social media, and the more we just share this message to as many people as we can, the more people will start to, start to realize what they're doing and start to go vegan, you know, or at least they will start to consume less and less animal products. So sometimes, there is, or most of the time, there is really nothing we can do. We can try to uh, share a message of love and compassion with them and just tell them directly, look, I know what you're doing and I know... Because, look, first of all, everyone is innately compassionate. We have the heart. The heart is always within us. The heart is the organ that contains our emotions and our feelings. Okay? So our emotions and our feelings are always there. The love, the compassion, the empathy, the caring, the kindness, the joy, the happiness. We we have that, but sometimes for the majority of people it's been heavily suppressed and hidden for many years or even decades. And so we have to understand that was me back then. Okay, maybe not directly abusing animals, but that was me back then eating the animal products. So what so it's like I'm looking at myself. So what can I do to plant seeds of awakening within that person or at least reawakening because we know that person has already awoken and that awakening I mean that those people innately know that what they're doing is not right they've been born um, compassionate and loving and caring until our, pro our culture programmed the opposite and so we need to reawaken to the love for all life and so what would we say to ourselves if we're looking at ourselves and if we're seeing ourselves beating another animal what would we do 
What would we do? And so I think what is really needed and the key to everything is love. But love in a certain way. So for example, if we see someone, let's say our, I don't know, whoever it is in our family, we, let's say we see someone in our family beating someone else. Let's say, like really beating. Um, and usually like they beat for either two reasons. Either there's, there's an actual reason for it. Maybe they were doing drugs or something and their, and their parents found out and they started beating them or whatever. So that is kind of what I would say, not legitimate beating, but it's like a beating for some reason, okay? Now the other beating would be because that other person is not doing what the parent or whoever is doing the beating, that person is not doing what the parent wants. So for example, let's say the child is screaming all the time and just just screaming all the time and uh, stomping their feet and making all kinds of scene and and uh, acting up and all kinds of stuff, right? And then the, eventually the parent is saying nicely, please, you know, don't what however the parent is saying nicely not to not to abuse, you know, not to make those noises, and not to scream and not to do all that kind of stuff. Whatever it is, the parent then eventually starts beating the child and then sometimes it goes on for however long but it goes on for years and years and years and years okay now it might be that uh, for example the parent might be just stressed from their job or whatever and they're taking it out on their kids by beating them for example for whatever reason they they drink they're alcoholics or whatever or they're drug addicts and then they after they get drunk, they start beating their spouses or their children, and that's that's how, how it goes, right? So there's only one thing that we can do in this in this instance, okay? What these people need at this time is love, okay? As much love as they possibly can get. And so we need to go up to them, just plainly go up to them and start start to give them a hug, like really hug them with all your heart and all your love, hug them, give them your love, hug them, kiss them on the cheek or wherever, kiss them, give them your love, hug them, like really love them and say, I understand, I understand, I love you, I love you, I understand, I love you, and do this, you know, and um, suddenly, because what happens is the people need love, that's what it is. We're lacking love in this world. People are so bombarded with our culture and with all the suffering and with all the stress and with all the negativity and with all the fear throughout our whole society that we just need love. So love these people. You know, love the, the person who's the abuser, especially. We need to love them as much as we can. Now, I know some people will say, well, they're doing the abuse, they're, they're causing the violence, and so how can we be loving towards them? It's like they need love. You know, they need love. Just put your arms around them and love them and hug them. And stay like that. Don't just hug them for like five seconds. Hug them for like a couple minutes. And then you do the same thing with the child. Okay? And realize that you have to come from a state of love. You have to come from a full unconditional love from your heart. And understand that love is lacking in this world, okay? And another thing that we'll do once the current situation dwindles down, uh, the event, then you start to discuss how um, somehow connecting that and their and the compassion that they have within them. So don't just directly talk about veganism because they won't make that connection we got to understand that we need to tell the people not we have to tell the people that they are compassionate they're loving they're caring and they love their families we're here together to create a better world and to tell them that they are not bad people it's a program that our culture has put on us um, Tell them that we, we're all, all of us are stressed and depressed and 
we all there's so much violence in this world we need to bring more love and caring and kindness into the world and do that while you're with those people okay and do it from the heart from a loving heart and in a, in a way when we're speaking to them we can in a sense we can say you but not you in a sense of judging them like you are bad or you're doing this because you're you're you know like don't say that try to um just understand what they're try what they're going through you know try to have as much empathy and compassion for them as we possibly can and to just send as much love as we can to them not only do we do this in the moment we also do this when we're by ourselves meditating and we focus on the people like our families for example and close friends we focus on them being vegan right at that moment being vegan right in the moment seeing them eating in our minds when we have our eyes closed in our minds picturing them eating a vegan burger or eating some fruit and vegetables and not causing harm or anything like this but see what we actually want what do we want these people to do okay how do we want like our families and close friends we want them to be vegan so we have to envision that in our minds we have to envision that we have to see them in our minds eating that burger and no matter what if we see them physically personally eating another burger uh, chicken burger or eating drinking some i don't know milk or eating some cheese or eggs we don't see that but we see we envision in our minds that they're eating something else and we see them as pre-vegans as they are actually vegan now okay pre-vegan is actually not even the right word like physically they're not vegan yet but the universe wants the wants uh basically how the universe works is that we have to say what we want right now and we don't say it as what we want we say it as it's already happening okay so these people our parents our sisters and brothers they are vegan now and we picture that in our minds we envision that they're vegan now we might see them eating again eating a chicken burger or whatever but we envision them eating vegan right now in our minds we envision that and we hold them in our hearts and we send that out to the universe and so these are the things that we can do if we are witnessed or if we see with see some violence in front of us and sometimes we may not be able to help directly at that moment but we can do whatever we can to make this world a better place and to bring about peace in the entire world and with all beings so again this video has been sponsored by evolution diet pet food i really appreciate what lynn and eric wiseman are doing the people that are behind evolution diet pet food i really really thank them for doing what they're doing with evolution diet pet food it's a most complete nutrition a vegan nutrition for your cats dogs and other animals please do visit their website if you have a dog or cat or any other companion animal at petfoodshop.com that's petfoodshop.com again please like this video share it around with all your friends and family and also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel to click the little bell icon to receive notifications in your email to also subscribe to my email newsletter and if you want to support me if you really like this video and want to support me i thrive on donations so please sponsor me make a one-time donation or monthly donations and you can go to weareinterconnected.com backslash sponsors 
So please do that. All the links are down below in the description. But please support my work. Buy my books. Do whatever you can to make me continue this work because I do this full time. I share the message through YouTube, through my books. And I'm able to do this because of you guys. And uh, thank you so much for being here and listening and watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone.